Hey everybody, the seven habits of highly successful developers. Now, these are my top seven picks. Could have been eight, could have been nine, but seven habits is kind of uh, it's a famous book. So I figured I'd just borrow that for this video. Click baity title, as they would say. So, but these are very important. I think uh, some of these things are non-standard. A lot of things here I'm going to be uh, mentioning you probably wouldn't have considered. All right, so here we go. Number one, good documentation. When you're writing your app code, when you're at writing your app, be sure to document things well, especially the more complex aspects of your code. Um, that being said, uh, the code should be um, self-describing, but that's uh, tip number six. But anyway, good documentation. Learn to write it for your code. You appreciate it, especially down the road, six months later, a year later, when you have to update things. You'd be glad that you documented things. Number two, get your apps out as quickly as possible. Why do you want to do that? So you can get user feedback in the um, startup parlance. They call it MVP, uh, minimum viable product, because. This is something any entrepreneur has known for a long, long time. I've known it for a couple of decades myself. You never know what's gonna work. So you wanna get it out there. You wanna get the product in the hands of your consumer as quickly as possible. So number two, get your apps out quickly as possible. Or MVP, minimum viable product. Number three, you got to be language and technology agnostic. You can't be somebody who is married to a particular language. PHP is the best, and that's it, everything else sucks. Python is the best, everything else sucks. Java, you get the idea. You don't want to be stuck in that camp. You want to look at each project, and you have to decide wh what that project, uh, which language, which technology would, would best serve that project. That is the key. Don't get caught up in language uh, wars. Don't get caught up in... Uh, being uh, married to a particular technology, whether it be a programming language or a, a framework, what have you. Be language agnostic. Number four, when you sit down to write your apps, have coding standards. Your syntax, uh, how you structure things, naming conventions, etc., etc. This is important so that it will become intuitive to be able to navigate through your code base and navigate through your app. It will also help you along in terms of writing your code because the more of a convention that you set, the easier it will be for you to sort of lay out your project quickly. And this will work uh, across different projects once you have a certain standard. I used to do that myself back in the day, especially when I had my own framework. I had a very particular standard, so when I, was, when I would sit down to write out a project, it would just come out really quick because I had the standards in terms of database access layers and validation layers and stuff. I had frameworks of code and so forth, but it was just easy to lay out very quickly. So have standards. Fortunately, many, well, all the modern programming languages and frameworks have these standards in place. So Python has the PEP uh, standards and uh, so on and so forth. So um, I just mentioned the Python one because I just finished the Python course, so it's fresh in my mind. So yes, every language has the standards. You may want to uh, flesh that out even more to streamline your workflow. Standards, very important. Number five, favor simple code versus complex code. Whether it be in individual methods or functions, whether it be in the structure of your app or structure of your modules, Look to create code that's really easy to understand. I'd rather have an extra few lines of code that are much simpler to understand when I come back to it six months later than having some very complex code that saves two or three lines. Uh, yeah, simpler, simpler code, the better. Uh, number six, use self-describing naming conventions in your code, whether it be function names, method names, variable names, in the case of web apps, view names, etc use have a standard naming convention and make sure they describe something about what it is that the code is doing so you have a, a validation block object called validator you know etc cetera, etc cetera. so these are basic things you may find them useful you may not find them useful but again self-describing naming convention is huge it will make your code much more readable 
ultimately, I spoke about documentation before, um, and you know this goes to comments as well, commenting your code. Ultimately, the less comments you need to put in your code because your code is simple and self-describing in its naming conventions, the better off you will be. Um, so you would use your comments sparingly. Again, if you don't know what comments are, you got to do one of my beginner's courses on programming, whether it be JavaScript, PHP, or Python. Ah, uh, number seven. This one's going to freak out the nerds out there. You should have good communication skills. Good communication skills. Very important when you're speaking with your clients, that they're able to understand you, you're able to understand them. So you got to learn to explain some of the uh, concepts that you you know that are represented in your code. You got to be able to explain these things in simple terms. That's harder said. Excuse me. That's easier said than done. It's harder to do than to uh, to say. There we go. Um, yeah, you want to learn to communicate as best you can, not only verbally but in written as well. When I was a freelancer, one of the things that differentiated me from people out there, and this is what clients told me, is that I was able to break down the structure of proposals very clearly and in non-nerd terms, and this allowed me to really uh, communicate with the client very effectively, which got me the contracts, but, but, but also cleared up a lot of frustration because they were able to understand the approach I was taking as opposed to them being not too sure, then writing a bunch of code, and then they're saying, that's not what we wanted. So being able to communicate well is important. Uh, one of the best ways to learn how to communicate well, verbally and whatnot, is to write simply, write well. I covered this in other vlogs. Learn to write well, concisely, and that's going to help you with your ability to just communicate overall. Ah, uh, that's it. Those are seven. Uh, those are seven. You know, I'm going to add in number eight. Uh, you got to use. Uh, you got to understand your DevOps development operations. It gets pretty complex these days, in my opinion. But at least understand GitHub. That's a code repo, so that you have continuous. Uh, you have backups and backups of various releases, so you can roll back things very quickly. If you update your code, it sucks. You can go back to the previous that worked, etc., etc., etc. So yeah. Understand GitHub or uh, Bitbucket or one of these repos so that uh, you can get the job done. We do, we use Git. Um, well, my coders use Git and it just it's just another layer of safety, another layer of redundancy. Uh, there you go. Those are the seven habits of highly successful developers. I hope you enjoyed.